Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the GameReplays.org Invitational Tournament. This is a round two match between DRD and DWI and this is game number three. So this game has all the marbles, it's what everything comes down to. I am Four Card Jester, with me today is Yawning Angel and a special guest of Prince of Ice. How are you guys doing? Very well, thank you Jester. I would quite like to see some different bands, but I'm not going to, so I may as well resign myself to the fact. Oh, Bubbles band, fair enough. Anyway, I'll let you get on with things and talk about that later. You just... I'm good right now, too. That is good to know. I was wondering if you had a, a push-to-talk button, but it's all good. You just cannot get satisfied with these bands, can you? Well, we do have five of the same bands we had last time. You know. I was moaning last game about how they were always exactly the same bands, and these are again exactly the same bands, so... Hard to see why I wouldn't, really. Except that we had a Magmas and a Bubbles in last game, which means there's at least two new bands. Oh right, four of the same bands, then. Technicalities, technicalities. That's what you're here for, isn't it? Pretty much. Yeah, but let's just recap the game series. Game number one, DWI took it in a decisive last fight. Basically, they're able to push right into the base, taking out DRD. Game number two comes back with a DRD pickup of Dark Lady, which just absolutely destroyed DWI time and time again. Despite, you know, a Pro Tempest pickup, his uh, ultimate just really wasn't used to the best degree that it could, and... Yeah, so that brings us here to game number three, DWI, DRD. Both teams start with D. I like that. Whereas I've been hating them for it all evening, just to give you a counterbalance to that opinion. Well, what is yin without yang? What is plus without minus? I'm the plus, you're the minus. Agreed? Well, at least with plus and minus, they begin with different letters, and I can tell the two apart. I've been mixing them up all evening. It's like Trixie and Rexy. It's technically possible, but extremely unhelpful. It's like B Kid and B Diz. Yeah, but at least they're not on the same team. But anyway, should we talk about the bands? Bubbles, not hugely surprising. Again, Magnus, not hugely surprising. Magnus is. One of the little rotating pool of heroes that gets banned periodically because it's a fairly decent early game in Roma and someone fancies taking one or other of them out. And Bubbles is banned because in both the other two games he's actually been fairly useful to be honest. And ever since his buff he's probably high tier stroke low ban, so... I mean they both make fairly good sense to me. They strike me as we don't really fancy being on the sharp end of what DRD were doing last game kind of bands and I wouldn't be too surprised if they were both from DWI and they are so yeah it's basically just DWI banning, banning heroes that fit well with what DRD have been doing all night their bands tailored to DRD rather than just generic ones which I quite like because I'm bored of generic bands see above yeah you've been voicing your displeasure all throughout the game series so let's talk a little bit about the picks which slayer picked up who followed to a voodoo jester and an andromeda so two great support heroes off the bat soul reaper haven't seen him in a while but there comes the glacius best support hero in the game and that was followed to an Infora who really with her tweaks has really come up in the competitive market in affording a lot of map control with her ultimate and just gank 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 fun times uh, Valkyrie is now being picked up as well for DWI so probably a nice solo uh, character for them and I don't know I kind of see a tri-lane and if anything with Andromeda really kind of just shouts tri-lane tri-lane gonna get it out here as we just wait for a looks like another dark lady pick up for DRD as well as a tundra being picked up for them so looking like they're gonna be supporting all their marbles with dark lady I'm a little surprised she wasn't banned last turn well I think what I think do you know I've anticipated this big I've tried to play around it because They've only got the one carry so far, that's Valkyrie, and that says to me that they're going to try and run a ganking strap with just the one carry, maybe a second, but it'll be a semi-carry, and try to out-gank DRD rather than out-turtle them, because I think Dark Lady's shown pretty conclusively that it's not a terribly good idea to try and turtle against them. WAC is obviously perfectly competent at that. So I think what DWI are planning to do is maybe play around Beastwood, maybe not. Looks like they are, but just gank hard and try to stomp Dark Lady's face into the ground before she becomes an issue. 
So, uh, Prince, we haven't heard from you yet. What do you think of the teams? Uh, so far, everything seems to go pretty well. Um, I really like the setup on uh, DRD right now. You know, uh, Glacius is always a good babysitter. I really like Glacius' babysit, and Dark Lady is my favorite carry. So it's going to be really enjoyable to watch that. And I hope to see some form of try lane on DWI. That'll be entertaining too. As long as they can pick a hero. There we go. Pandemonium coming out. He will definitely be spearheading a try lane, leaving uh, Nymphora and Valkyrie f to their own devices. So we will have to see how this game three ganking setup goes down. I think a lot of this is going to hinge on how well in Eternal Envy solo mid Nymphora works out because he's been sort of playing it in scrims quite a bit, presumably is hedging against the time when Nymphora is finally viable and this may be the day when I get to see Codex Nymphora being played solo mid in an actual competitive game because if it is I will be so happy just for the sheer complete and utter idiocy that it involves. But I mean, as a concept, it's definitely viable. It's been pretty con conclusively buffed with the last Nymphora patch, and I'm hoping we're going to see a turn levy pull us off. In terms of a ganking setup, I really like what DWI have got. Valkyrie is very well suited, if handled right, to dealing with the hard solo you get with a tri lane. Nymph can be really, really good at taking over the map. See Kirby rules playing it, if you don't believe me. And Panda tri lanes tend to rape the ever living crap out of people, so. Yeah, with a little luck, DWI should be in a good position to gank the crap out of DRD. On the other hand, DRD have got something with a turtle strat, kind of. How to see how it works out, really. I'm not 100% on what they're doing. I'd like some time to think about it. Over to you. Well, let's see if we can get an early bloodlust. I think they had one at the 30 second mark in game number two by putting an offensive ward here and then picking up a Glacius kill on that Hellborn team. Now, who do we got up top? Voodoo Jester, Andromeda, Pandemonium. So Tri-Lane going top. This is the favored lane for the Tri-Lane, at least for the Panda that I've seen all day. And it looks like I've lost Yawning Angel. But hey, Prince of Ice, I hear you're a cool guy. Snicker, snicker. <laughs> <laughs> Funny. Appreciate it. Thanks. Uh, I do a little casting with Yawning, so I'll try to do my best here. No worries, he's just uh, failing as he normally does. So, thanks for nothing, Angel. Great to see ya. We'll see ya next week for the Invitational. Nope, he's already gone. Okay, so, we got the Trilane up top, and this is what you were kind of looking for, right? The DWI Trilane? Or were you looking for the DRD Trilane? No, I was definitely looking for a, a DWI tri lane. Uh, I really like Pandemonium tri lanes. They're they're fun. I like Pandemonium. He's just a really cool uh, hero. I like watching him play. I cannot disagree at all. Panda is my favorite hero to play. <laughs> Poor Angel. And yeah, I just always get a great kick watching a panda in good action. Like a poor panda makes me a sad panda and yeah I just really like that a little bit of action up top as it looks like Witch Slayer is getting beat on by all three of these guys and he could be in a little bit of trouble Dark Lady able to pick up that Andromeda but Witch Slayer was paid for as well they got the first blood seconds before uh, DWI could so there you go a lot of action right off the bat at the 42nd mark Looks like uh, Tundra is having some trouble against this Nymphora mid, which, you know, with that stun as spammy as it is, you know, Nymphora is really back into uh, competitive play now, so he's going to have a lot of issues against Nymphora mid. It's an interesting lineup. I wonder why they put Tundra mid. Like, you, they had the, the Dark Lady there before. They could have easily put Soul Reaper there as well, but he is up against a Valkyrie. Not too sure that a Tundra could have done any better against a Valkyrie, to be honest. I like Tundra's new charge ability, Cold Shoulder, and I think it really stacks well with Dark Lady, making her just attack extremely fast. So uh, hopefully we see some good stuff with that this game. But uh, he's going to have a lot of difficulty uh, mid lane, so I'm not sure how well his game is going to be. 
Uh, Soul Reaper's definitely holding his own down south as the tri-lane versus tri-lane action up top is a little stale at this moment. Now, there are wards up there from the Hellborn team, a defensive wards, I suppose. There's no offensive wards that are placed from the Legion as they just more went more for a typical rune spot instead of locking off. As I say, that looks like a fresh new ward goes down to block off those creeps. So maybe I'm just talking a little too ahead of the times. Yeah, tri-lane versus tri-lane. I actually didn't see it coming from uh, DRD. I didn't expect the tri-lane. But uh, I guess it's more of an unusual lineup for a tri-lane, but it seems to be working in their favor. Uh, no one's really winning the lane right now, really. Not a, um, it's not obvious who's winning the lane so far. Well, I can definitely tell you who's winning mid. It's definitely that Nymphora as she's going in on Tundra, but that was alright. Looks like Panda up top going to be taking out a Witch Slayer. And I do believe he missed his cannonball, so... Yeah, need a little bit pla bit better placement there, but a kill's a kill, right? I suppose, uh, I guess if you actually got the cannonball on Glacius, we could have gotten a double tap of some sort. But that puts us now at 2-1. Both kills are now up top. But look at that double stun going off on Dark Lady from that acid cocktail. Fun times. Unfortunately, nothing was on it. But Andromeda coming around. Now they're going to be picking up that Glacius. No problem there. Dark Lady, however, wants to make something of Andromeda and will. And just not enough mana on a Pandemonium to really do anything at this point. All he can do is auto attack. But Witch Slayer might have something to say about that as he comes up top. But that will put an end to that little fight there. So, yeah, another exchange, Glacius for Andromeda. You know what I didn't like about that is Andromeda might have been able to be saved. Uh, Pandemonia had good mojo on him. He just wasn't close enough to get it activated on Andromeda. I think maybe if he was closer, the heal might have saved her. At least she could have tried running better. Uh, just kind of disappointing to see that happen. Oh, here's their chance going in on the panda with every ability they can. Does look like an Andromeda was behind. Now they're going to try to get her instead. One more auto attack is all they need, and she cannot get out of those trees whatsoever. Being backed into a corner by a giant panda must be a scary thing, I imagine. But Warden using his bird to great effect, kind of like a free ward uh, at the time. Where is Tundra anyways? Tundra is went to town. He got forced out of lane there by that Nymphora as she's just basically dominating him. No problem. Eternal Envy playing mid-Nymphora as Yawning Angel specially said to great degree. Glacius up top. Bad positioning, wrong place at the wrong time. He goes down, shatters into a million pieces. And that puts us now 5-2 early tri-lane advantage to this pandemonium combo. I don't think I could have asked for a better early game. It's uh, pretty aggressive right now on both sides. So um, I think we're going to be seeing this action uh, all game and Soul Reaper finally gets a kill on Valkyrie down bottom he's been basically dominating the lane the entire game through and with level 6 his uh, ultimate definitely finished her off yeah if you just ding 6 in the middle of the fight and you're banking on him not being 6 well yeah that's going to be a bad Panda is trying to stay alive so hard here he's stuck in the uh, trees up there, <laughs> literally not too much else he can do. He's trying to get out of there. Uh, it looks like he will successfully make it out. Clutch play. Uh, can't really say too much for Glacius as it looks like Valkyrie ported top to come say hello. And down she goes. Now going to be picking up a double tap on this Witch Slayer. Down he goes as well. Quad lane taking out the try up top. Great teleport by uh, Valkyrie. It was definitely needed in the situation. So now Valkyrie will have to make her long trek home down to the bottom lane. This has left Degius playing that Soul Reaper to himself, so Free Farm is going to be appreciated for him. And now Tundra has to be a little bit concerned as there's now Valkyrie in his lane, but I don't think he's that 
worried, to be honest. I'd give Soul Reaper free farm any day. I wouldn't be too worried.